If you think X squared over X equals X, you're in for a treat. You're going to want to stick around because we're going to dive into what might not be an obvious answer to this problem. See, what I want to start with is I want to simply plug in some sample values of X into the expression X squared over X. And if you try 1, 2, negative 1, feel free to try whatever, you'll find that for the most part, X squared over X will just simply be the value of X. And you might be wondering, hey, Dave, isn't this pointless? Doesn't x squared over x simplify to x because you can just cross out an x on top and bottom? Well, for the most part, yes. But I want you to explore the edge case of what happens when x equals 0. If you were to plug in 0 into the expression as is, you would get 0 squared over 0. So the question for you then is, does 0 happen to be the case for what x squared over x equals? Think about it. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Okay, so one thing in mathematics, which you may or may not already know, is that dividing by zero is not allowed. And in the case of the expression above, zero squared divided by zero, simplifying to zero over zero, gives you what's known as an indeterminate form. I have some other videos you can watch on limits and applications of this, such as with L'Hopital's rule. But for this video here, we're going to stick with the fact that, okay, there's a problem when we simplify the expression. And if you think that simplifying x squared over x to x allows us to divide by zero because we no longer have a denominator, the problem with that approach is you have now changed the domain of the original problem. Stick around because we're going to see why. And if you haven't already, ninja kick that subscribe button and leave a like. Tell me if you like what you see here and help grow my channel. So moving on, the next thing I want you to try out is to maybe look at this visually. If I were to graph y equals x, that left-hand expression, on the Cartesian plane, you'll just get the simple line, right? There's nothing special here. There's no issues with jump discontinuity or any holes in the graph. But when you want to graph x squared over x, it gets a little trickier. See, we can't just simplify the expression. But knowing that we cannot divide by 0 means we need to treat that graph a little differently. So what we want to figure out is what that graph is going to look at. And in case you haven't already seen it, I have other videos on limits, but we can take a limit approach here to give a little bit of a clue on what we're going to do here. So dividing by zero, what really helps is to look at what happens with x squared over x just to the left of zero and just to the right. So instead of dividing at zero where you can't divide because division by zero is not allowed, we're going to get as close as we can to that point on both sides. And so we can use this notation, this minus sign here, to indicate that we're going to approach the origin from the left going in the direction of the right. And so x squared over x, in this case, since we never get to zero, so we don't have any issues with division, would simply be evaluating the simplified expression of the limit as x approaches zero from the left of simply x. And we know that'll be zero, that's safe to do. And repeating this for the right-hand side using the plus notation here, approaching the origin from the right would have a similar expression that's simplified of x squared over x giving you x. And when you plug in zero safely into this limit, you'll get zero. Okay, so what does this tell us? It tells us one thing, and it tells us something that we have to also be careful about. We know then that the limit of x squared over x exists at the origin. It's simply zero. Because if you remember for the definition of a limit, you don't have to have the function defined there because we're talking about approaching a point. But the main thing you want to watch out for is things like jump discontinuity, which we don't have here because no matter how we approach the origin, we get the same value from a left side and the right side. And how does this help us then to answer the original question of x squared over x and whether it equals x? Well, it gives a clue about maybe how we should approach this looking at the domain of x squared over x. So just because the limit exists at x equals zero, it doesn't necessarily mean that the origin is included in the domain of the function. So if we want to look at this now in such a way where we graph x squared over x, we know we have the limit at the origin, and all values are okay except for when you're dividing by zero. You get the original line graph from y equals x, except you basically have a hole here at the origin because the function is not defined. Now, I drew this circle so that way you could see it. It's not going to normally be this big, but you get the idea. To get the final answer of then what the domain of y equals x looks like compared to y equals x squared over x, 
the domain of y equals x is simply the set of all x values where x is any real number. That's where this R notation comes from. You can use negative pi, 5 over 2, 1 million. It doesn't really matter. However, we have to be cautious of the fact that the domain of y equals x squared over x is not the same as the domain of y equals x. Because in this case, we have to exclude x being zero because division is not allowed. So then we know that if the domain of y equals x and the domain of x squared over x are not the same, then these are absolutely not equal to each other unless whatever problem you're dealing with excludes zero from the origin for both. And then you can simply say that, okay, x squared over x simplifies to x.